Hello, and welcome to the Integrated Rehab and Performance Podcast. My name is Dr. Nick Curtis, running the show here at the Integrated Rehab and Performance Center. So today we are talking about low back pain, um, but more specifically, we are talking about low back pain the day after lifting or the, the couple days after living, lifting or even uh, just after performing a heavy set where a lot of times we are noticing that lifters, especially uh, people who have been doing it a long time, will strike a certain strategy to create stability in the low back, which is essential. Um, but a lot of times the strategy that they are choosing can have long-term um, issues, right? So we'll describe that in some more detail today. Uh, what we'll be describing more specifically is what Dr. Richard Olm at Athlete Enhancement describes as the extension compression stabilizing strategy, right? So we'll dive into that a little bit more today. Okay, so what is the extension compression stabilizing strategy and what does it have to do with low back pain and uh, stabilizing the core and the low back? Well, anyone here who lifts some weights might be familiar with the, the idea of staying out of lumbar or low back flexion, right? So if we do a deadlift, we want to make sure that we're not rounding our lower back. Right? That's very important, um, especially if we're considering the discs and trying to keep them happy and healthy. A lot of issues, a lot of strains, and a lot of disc issues can come from moving heavy weight or just being under heavy load while in a flexed low back position, right? Where those lumbar spine vertebrae tilt forward on top of each other and they leave that uh, backside of the vertebrae highly exposed and um, they leave the disc vulnerable to excursions and different issues and bulges. Um, so it's definitely a position we want to stay out of. What we can do to stay out of that position is do the exact opposite, where we can jack that low back into a kind of terminal extension where we have as much lordosis back there as we can manage. And a lot of times this is what you see when we cue things like chest up. So imagine you're in the bottom of a squat and uh, you just picture yourself pointing your chest or trying to get your chest as high as you can. Imagine what that does to the low back and you'll notice that's what we're talking about with extension, that's low back extension. Or even in a deadlift, imagine you are at the bottom of a deadlift and you're ready to start pulling back up. Uh, imagine cueing chest up and what would happen in the low back, that is this extension position in the low back, right? And what that does in that position is it actually does a pretty good job of stabilizing the low back, keeping you from rounding and moving in that low back, um, but at the expense of jamming up your facets a little bit and jamming up your lumbar paraspinals, right? So those muscles that, uh, strand the the lumbar vertebrae on either side those muscles tend to get very tight they shorten and then they stay shortened because we do so much work in this position where we are pulling ourselves into that low back extension okay so we have a couple things going on where the the bony anatomy starts to get a little angry the musculature certainly starts to get a little bit angry and then some of the other soft tissues in there will eventually find uh, find themselves injured right so we're talking more about the discs in there um so yeah, there's a few different things going on, and uh, these things happen on a spectrum of time where we might notice low back soreness from those chronic paraspinals just being tight all the time because we're learning to stabilize with them instead of using other options. But also the uh, bony architecture, again, over time can develop into some of the more arthritic issues. And then again, over time where those, um, even the discs now to, for a different reason, be, start to become so compressed that we can get some disc issues long term by using the strategy. We kind of forego the short term sudden disc bulge from a flexed position, which is uh, definitely something we, we certainly want to avoid. But then we, we create higher incidence of long term disc issues, right, where um, we can get away with it for a little while using this, this strategy and maybe qu uh, quite a long time but eventually now we are putting our disc under so much compression not only during the lift but now also throughout the rest of our day when we we don't ever come out of this extension compression stabilizing strategy right and so you notice people with those very tight low back muscles well they they've never learned to come back out of that extension compression stabilizing strategy right so it's an effective strategy for maintaining low back uh, stability during a heavy lift, right? Think about it like a one rep max back squat. 
We definitely want to be in that position rather than a flexed low back position. There's no doubt about that, but we can do better so long as we train them, right? And so the, some of these cues, weight in your heels, chest up, look towards the, uh, the ceiling or keep your gaze up high. All these things do a good job of keeping you in that low back extension. Really what, what they do is they do a good job of keeping you out of low back flexion. And unfortunately, we, are in, uh, we tend to go into too much or hyperlordotic state in that low back instead of using other strategies to stabilize at the, uh, at the core and the low back and that whole kind of thorax, right? And that's using the diaphragm. So we'll talk about that a little bit here. Okay, so we understand that the fitness industry has kind of taught us to use this extension compression stabilizing strategy and that it certainly is a way better option than the alternative which was kind of letting your low back do whatever it wants and maybe come into a little bit of flexion Um, when we're under heavy heavy loads and moving a lot of weight we definitely don't want to do low back flexion now otherwise the low back could flex all, all at once you shouldn't be afraid to do that motion but when we are stabilizing for a heavy movement we definitely want to make sure that we are stabilizing and not moving too much at that low back right? This strategy does a good job of doing that. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but again, like he had mentioned, long-term, we start to run into some issues and there's just no avoiding that. Uh, it's, it's quite clear. People are coming in with these types of issues all the time. They've been trained to stabilize in this way. So let's take a second to learn a different alternative way to stabilize that will create sufficient pressure in the abdomen to stabilize the low back uh, while also protecting you from too much compression and then too much long-term compression where you uh, your low back muscles are maintaining all that pressure and compression throughout the day, right? So let's learn how to avoid that. That's by using the diaphragm. So how do we use the diaphragm? There's a few different ways to start training this, but the best is just to lay on your back uh, with your pelvis in a neutral position. So try to lay on your back. You can get your feet up on a wall or on an ottoman, or you can just go feet flat on the floor. And from here, you just want to work on getting that diaphragm to descend towards your pelvis, right? You want to take a big breath in through your nose, push the diaphragm down. Think about pushing the air straight down into your pelvis and then feel it when it hits the bottom, just expand into 360 degrees. So you can use your fingers to poke in through your abdomen and feel that abdomen start to push out when you're at the uh, the end of your breath in, right? When you feel that space with air, you should feel your fingers getting pushed out if you're poking them into your abdomen. Do the same thing in the front the sides of the abdomen, and then again, the back sides of the, uh, of the low back, right? And you should feel, as you take a breath in, you should feel expansion into that area as well. Now, this takes some time for some people to really learn how to really get that diaphragm to descend as far down as they can, and then try to push that air into the back a little bit. It takes some cueing. Again, use your fingers, get them into your low back, right? Push them just outside of the paraspinals there, push them in there. And then think with your breath, try to push or push those fingers all the way out, right? So you have a cue and then you say, that's where I want to push the air. All right. This takes some time. Uh, reach out if you, if you need some more help or questions. And I have some videos that kind of walk us through that as well. Now, after we do that, we need to take that to a seated position and then eventually a standing position. And then we need to be able to do this, um, with heavy weight on our back. Or if we were, say, a CrossFitter, while, while under duress, right? So where we're trying to use our diaphragm desperately to get air into our body, right? And breathing pretty heavily and moving heavy weight. Um, in that case, we really need to master this. And again, worst comes to worst, we just use that extension compression stabilizing strategy when we need it. But when we train throughout the rest of the year, we are hopefully not keeping ourselves in that position um, creating those chronic long-term issues, right? So we have that strategy in our back pocket for when we need it, but otherwise we want to train as much as we can with this diaphragm stabilizing strategy instead. Okay. To summarize, we have a strategy of stabilizing the low back that protects ourselves from, from almost certain damage and uh, pain, right? And that's low back flexion. So what we do is we do the exact opposite and we get into as much extension as we can in that low back. And that's a a lot of times how we have just been trained and we do everything we can to stay out of that low back flexion. Now, that is a pretty good strategy. It's good at its job at uh, maintaining, or sorry, actually more resisting low back flexion. Um, But as I described, there's some long-term potential issues that where our paraspinals become so used to this position that they never let go. 
So you get low back tightness and soreness, as well as that, that low back tightness chronically over time will lead to some bony changes, maybe some arthritic changes through there. And even uh, more severe is maybe some disc issues where we've just created so much compression for so long, um, which is good at stabilizing things. But if we never learn to turn that off, well, now we're going to get disc issues for a different reason than before. Before, it's by putting the disc in a vulnerable position um, under load that could create a disc issue like a bulge. In this case, we are compressing them for so long that we are now leaving them vulnerable for, um, again, same thing, disc bulges and things like that. Okay. Now, this there's a whole host of other potential problems that can come from being this hyperlordotic and low back extension where when we do that, the pelvis orientation also changes. So a lot of times we end up in an anterior tilt um, where this the pelvis rotates forward so much. And now we're, we're affecting how the hips are articulating at the acetabulum, right? So the hip joints, where we're running out of range of motion because we are in a, such a hyperlordotic spot, creating our pelvis to be anteriorly tilted. And now our hips can't flex as high, and there's probably some issues in rotation range of motion as well. So if you suffer from a hip impingement or any sharp pain in the hip, a couple different reasons for why that might be happening. One of them is we are in an anterior pelvic tilt position while we're moving and squatting. One way, one reason why this might be is because we have a hyperlordotic, we're in that extension compression stabilizing strategy, right? And then just uh, many, many other different um, potential issues that just come from changing our low back position, which changes our pelvis, which changes our um, hip joints, and then d down the line, the knees, ankles, foot, right? So all sorts of things uh, down the chain and up the chain that change when we make these sort of changes in our low back, right? And so if we use the diaphragm to stabilize, um, through the the abdomen and the low back we don't need to jam our low back into so much extension we still want to stay out of flexion but we can stay into a little bit slightly more neutral state and again we can use our pelvis then more freely in that position okay now there is still a lot to learn about using the diaphragm to create um, stabilization through there we started off i showed kind of described briefly one of the starting mechanisms for learning to use a diaphragm, and that is on the ground, supine, right on our back, laying down. Um, and I will leave a link in the description here for uh, a video that walks you through this, this oftentimes first stage kind of rehab step that we take with patients. Um, so I will leave that video description there, which goes in a little bit more details about walking through that exercise and drill. Um, there's less theory behind it and more just this is how we perform it. This is what you're going to do to, um, to feel if you're doing it right, things like that. Right, so I'll leave that um, in the description so we can kind of have a starting place. And then uh, in the future, I might go into more details about how we progress that uh, going forward. All right, and there's also a blog article up that uh, you can check out that describes this in some different details um, and uh, just in word format that uh, was sent to the newsletter subscribers and then is also up on the blog. And again, if you're interested in this stuff, um, sign up for the newsletter on the website and you'll get things like this just sent to your email every week, uh, every Monday, typically. So go ahead and check that out on the blog if you want to learn a little bit more or just take a, another viewpoint at it. All right. Well, thank you for listening, and we will see you next week.